Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Sarah Cooper, the Community Engagement Officer for Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels in the South East of Scotland. I'm going to talk through a bit of background about the Developing Community Action Phase, referred to the DCA phase, uh, across the South of Scotland, as well as some of our key findings, successes and challenges. This map shows each project area in Scotland. The area I'll be focusing on is the south of Scotland, which you can see is split into east and west. The key strategic aims of the project in the south were to focus on priority areas for red squirrel conservation, or parks, which we'll discuss more in later slides. Additionally, we wanted to support and encourage communities and landowners to work together to protect red squirrels in their local area. There was a strong emphasis on engaging and supporting local people to take on the responsibility for the practical conservation work involved in looking after their local red squirrel populations. As with all the other project areas in the south, we also aimed to continue the recording and verification of squirrel sightings and the implementation of presence absence monitoring of squirrels. Here is a quick overview of the Southwest and Southeast teams. Each conservation officer manages uh, the Grey Squirrel officers, plus in the Southwest, um, an assistant conservation officer. In addition to these full time staff, we've also had one Southwest seasonal Grey Squirrel officer um, who covered the area known as the Loose Park. And in the southeast, we had two seasonal great squirrel officers covering the Tweed Valley and the Tevia and Rule parks. These are our priority areas for red squirrel conservation in the south of Scotland. This map may not be fully up to date due to very minor boundary changes. Networks were set up to cover these parks as these areas had red squirrel populations, a grey presence and or grey incursion routes habitat for red squirrels, and also good populations of people to build these networks. Later on in the DCA phase, the Queen Maccas Park and Loose Park were added to help slow or stop the spread of grey squirrels along incursion routes into other areas in Dumfries and Galloway. And the Tevia and Rule Park expanded northwards to include nearby red squirrel populations. The Berwickshire Park, was reduced to better reflect current red squirrel populations and to help focus the protection of the nearby red squirrels in Northern England. At the start of DCA, we had four networks in the South, Berwick Save Our Squirrels, Gatehouse Squirrel Group, the Glen Kens Red Squirrel Group and the Annandale Red Squirrel Group. Eventually, this increased to 18 networks across the South of Scotland. Some later networks were formed slightly beyond the parks to expand the range of protection where possible. In terms of engagement, we engaged over 3,000 people on the online community hub, um, that's for the South, and in the South we have over 600 active volunteers currently on the hub. We also held over 80 events, um, and volunteers helped with this uh, a great deal, um, they had hands-on roles such as helping at events, uh, also grey squirrel control, but they also had very active organisational roles such as uh, coordinators, grey control trainers, sightings verifiers and hub admins. Um, and of course training was available for all of these roles and um, we led over 40 different training workshops. And uh, in the next slide I'll go a little bit more into training. This shows a breakdown of how many individuals have been trained during the DCA phase and in which types of activity. So despite the effects of COVID, uh, we trained more people in 2020 than in any other year, possibly partly due to high attendance at online training sessions um, on top of in-person training when this was possible again. And the decrease in training from 2020 to 2021 could be partly due to limited need at this stage for some types of training, for example, public engagement training, um, as most, if not all, volunteer networks now have this collective knowledge. On to uh, the time put in by volunteers. This shows um, the number of hours put in by volunteers in the main volunteering categories. 
Um, so you can see volunteer hours in total have increased year on year, particularly in trapping. Uh, the decrease in survey work after 2019 is most likely down to the end of the spring survey, but also COVID. Um, COVID was also most likely the main reason for the reduction in public engagement from 2019 to 2020. In terms of challenges, uh, COVID um, impacted the work of staff, estates and volunteers. So there was a decrease in grey control. There was also a high uh, seed crop in 2020, which meant that grey squirrels uh, did increase in number. Um, also, COVID meant that we had a decrease in surveys, in-person meetings and in-person events. Uh, it was also a challenge to recruit new volunteers, as we most often meet these people uh, in person. Despite these challenges, though, volunteer networks remained active uh, via online meetings and online events. And eventually we were able to catch up with Great Squirrel Control. Um, another uh, sort of silver lining um, in the midst of COVID was the great increase in sightings. Um, we went from about nine and a half thousand in 2019 to 22 and a half thousand recorded in 2020. So irrespective of COVID, uh, retaining volunteers has always presented a challenge um, just due to the nature of volunteer groups because uh, people's commitments uh, change and um, we needed to continually recruit new volunteers to balance out the expected fluctuation in volunteer numbers. Um, and finally, one of the biggest challenges was squirrel pox. And I will just mention at this point um, that if you have feeders, do remember to disinfect them with Vircon, that's V-I-R-K-O-N, and uh, be sure to read the safety instructions that come with that. So on the topic of squirrel pox, um, this is a map showing squirrel pox cases in the south of Scotland between 2007 and 2020. Um, but I'd like to draw your attention in particular to the red triangles, which show the cases from 2017 to 2020, um, as this covers the majority of the DCA phase of the project. Uh, there have been isolated cases across the south of Scotland, um, but thankfully only a handful of major outbreaks, um, with the latest being Ock and Cairn, shown here, um, and the Tweed Valley, uh, shown here, um, saw a flurry of cases, but thankfully no major outbreaks. Um, Gatehouse, uh, just here, was the furthest west we detected squirrel pox, with Berwickshire over in the east here, um, being the furthest east the virus was detected in the south, um, though not quite as recently. The green triangles are between 2007 and 2011. Uh, thankfully, due to the hard work of staff, volunteers and landowners, squirrel pox has usually been stopped from spreading much further in each area that it's appeared. On to more positive things, aside from suppressing squirrel pox, we wanted to take this opportunity to highlight some of the key achievements of the volunteer networks. Um, so in the southeast, the Hoik, TV and Rural Red Squirrel Network successfully applied for a local wind farm grant of £4,000, which allowed them to buy lots of equipment for their network, including a red squirrel mascot. And the Tweedale Red Squirrel Network did some fantastic engagement with a local primary school whose pupils then produced posters, gave a talk at their school and contacted their local representatives. And also the Esk Valley Red Squirrel Group also did some work with a local school. They partnered up with um, a local wildlife conservation project, Wild Eskdale, to deliver some sessions on squirrel surveys and squirrel hair identification at the local academy. In the southwest, in the Moffat and District area, um, you can see a red squirrel in a woodland near Moffat um, that was previously overrun with grey squirrels. Thanks to targeted grey squirrel control done by the local group, uh, red squirrels have been returning even right in the middle of the town centre. Also, a fantastic recycling initiative was set up to team up with the South of Scotland Golden Eagle Project to donate their uh, grey squirrel carcasses to feed eaglets being reintroduced to the area. And the Solway Forests Red Squirrel Network has run an enormous array of community engagement activities 
including two squirrel trails in their local wood and two calendars, reviewing road signage with councils and an Adopt a Red Squirrel box campaign for surveys. In addition, uh, Scottish Forestry Funding equipped three groups with thermal imager cameras for community engagement and Galloway Glens Funding equipped four other groups with educational equipment, including a projector, which you can see is being checked out by this local red squirrel. In addition to the volunteer networks, we also wanted to acknowledge the hard work put in by volunteers out with these networks, such as volunteers on the trap loan scheme, sightings verifiers, admin volunteers, and spring survey volunteers. Um, so a big, big thank you to all of those. Uh, next, we'll cover some spring survey data. These are two maps um, just showing a comparison uh, of spring survey results for the southwest in spring 2013 and then in spring 2019 below that. And then across on the other side, uh, we've got the spring survey in southeast Scotland in 2013 and then below that the comparison uh, with 2019. Um, so the red squares are red only survey sites um, and then the blue squares are where only grey squirrels were found and the purple squares were where both species were found um, and black squares show where neither species was found. Um, so the key findings from the spring survey in the south were that grey squirrels were expanding to areas where neither species was present but we also saw an increase in tetrads, that's survey sites, uh, recording red squirrels only. Um, and this changed between 2018 to 2019. So during that time, seven survey sites had detected both or neither species. Um, but then in later years, this shifted to detecting only red squirrels. Uh, for a different type of data, uh, these maps, show red squirrel data from a combination of surveys, um, captures, so during trapping, um, and casual sightings. Um, so on the bottom there we've got 2016 and then the comparison above with 2021. So from 2016 to 2021 we saw increased sightings of red squirrels showing that populations uh, were recovering in areas where they've not been seen for some time. Um, so in Moffat circles here. Um, thanks to a local group there's been an increase in awareness and therefore more sightings being reported but as we saw earlier there's also been tangible evidence of red squirrels returning after many years. Um, in and around the Tweed Valley um, circled here the increase in red squirrel sightings also mirrors other data evidence we have for red squirrels doing well in the area. Awareness has also increased in the local area thanks to the work of the Tweedale Red Squirrel Network. Uh, this shows the numbers of grey squirrels dispatched in each area in the south in 2017 alongside 2020, um, where there are areas that are darker blue, the darker blue the colour, um, the more grey squirrels uh, were dispatched. Initially, we targeted our grey squirrel control work in the parks. Uh, which included training new grey control volunteers, assisting uh, landowners with the forestry grant scheme, getting new landowners on board with that, as well as intensive grey squirrel control by our grey squirrel officers. Um, over the project phase, grey squirrel control expanded to new areas, such as the new uh, Solway Forest Park, the Cree Maccas Park, and uh, the Loose Park. Um, grey control also increased in intensity across all of the parks during the project, as well as in some areas adjacent to the parks, such as the Castle Douglas and District area, and as new volunteer networks began trapping. Some caveats to this data are uh, the effects of COVID, which affected trapping effort, as well as the level of reporting, as there may have been some trapping records which weren't submitted on the hub. Uh, more grey squirrels were trapped and dispatched later on in the west of Dumfries and Galloway as the new parks in that region were set up. An increase in grey squirrels culled in some areas is also due uh, to the work of the volunteer networks. Um, for example, in Annandale, uh, the Annan Valley, uh, the Nis Valley, the Esk Valley, the Tweed Valley, the Berwickshire Park and the uh, northern section of the Teviot and Rule Park um, all show increased capture rates. 
uh, the work of grey squirrel officers as well um, also has an impact in particular targeted areas. Some areas show a decrease in grey squirrels caught, uh, such as the Liddersdale Red Squirrel Network area in the southern section of the TV and Rural Park. Um, but we know that this also has evidence from other data of increased trapping effort. Um, so this suggests that the increase in trapping effort is actually heavily reducing grey squirrel populations in this area. And uh, participation in the trap loan scheme, trapping by landowners, grey squirrel officers and volunteers, that's all fed into the data in these maps. Um, so just for a bit more information on grey control, um, this figure breaks down the numbers of all grey squirrels reported culled across the project by trapping and free shooting by SSRS staff, landowners, trapping under the Forestry Grant Scheme funding and Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels volunteers. Uh, the number of squirrels culled by GSOs and volunteers has increased each year. Numbers of grey squirrels culled by landowners remained fairly consistent due to many of them taking part in structured trapping schemes. Um, SSRS volunteers trapped more grey squirrels each year, eventually, as you can see, overtaking the SSRS staff contribution in 2020. This last point is an incredible achievement and we would like to highlight the huge effort by volunteers across the south of Scotland which went into this result. We could not have achieved what we did over the past five years without the combined efforts of everyone involved, uh, so thank you. That brings us to the end of our presentation on uh, the Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels DCA project in the south of Scotland. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. <laughs>